Um, do you like oversplits? <laughs> Me? Do I like oversplits? Um, I love the beauty of oversplits, but the process is kind of hard. I mean, <laughs> you know, the stretching sometimes it's not fun <laughs> because it hurts. But at the end, at the end of the day, it's still worth it. I can still do splits to this day. I'm sure Alexis can do it as well. <laughs> I can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what was it like being a part of the national team? <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, I was on both the junior and the senior national team. And uh, you can only make the national team when you're, I believe, 13 years old. So even though I tried out when I was like 11 and 12, even though I made it into the placement of national team, I couldn't be national team. I was too young. But I still went on trips with like Alexis and other national team members at the time who were seniors. Um, and then it came to the point where I became a junior. So that was an interesting experience. And then I became a senior with all the, the, the big dogs that you see uh, <laughs> on online and on YouTube and, and in person, all of your favorite gymnasts. And what was the process like? I, I, I'm going to say that I for sure did feel a little different. Like everybody knew that it was pretty obvious. I'm pretty sure you guys know why too. And so did Alexa. She felt a little different at one point too. But I think the beauty of that was that like nobody could be like us. Like, like the style that we had was so powerful, like so powerful. No, nobody can imitate that. I feel like that's where black excellence comes in. But um you do feel like you have, you know, a big responsibility because you're competing not only for yourself and for your coach, and, you know, for your mom, friends, but you're also competing to represent the United States of America, which is like kind of, you have a little bit of weight on your shoulders. So you, ha you have that in the back of your head. But I would say like the experiences were amazing. Like as a kid, you know, maybe I didn't get to have, you know, like the basic ice cream and stuff every day, like all of your other friends and stuff like that. But I got to travel internationally all the time uh, before COVID was a thing. <laughs> um, you just, it felt like you were, you ever seen movies where a person's entering like some rink or some competition, there's like lights everywhere in a big crowd and they're like breathing and like you're inside of their head and you can see that's exactly how it felt, but except that time I was the, the main character in the movie. It was, pretty cool <laughs> I wouldn't trade it for anything what has been like one of your favorite routines that you've done that's a good question Sydney um I would for sure say I had two favorite routines so um I feel like TikTok is really big now if you guys know but there was a song that was trending on TikTok called begging by Madcon you know the one goes begging begging you yeah that one so I was the first person to have that song as a routine before TikTok was invented. And that song, like before, like it was, it popped off. Like the whole crowd loved it, especially internationally because the song has flavor, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I would kill that routine. It was with the ball. Um, it was it just felt like I was putting on a show rather than competing. You know, it felt more, it, that's why I guess it was more enjoyable for me to do that routine. Cause I was like, yeah, I'm about to entertain everybody regardless if I don't place or just drop whatever. I want everyone to have a good time when I'm on the floor. And that's exactly what happened. The adrenaline was crazy. And another routine that people really liked was there were not many uh, gymnasts who had like African styled music. So I was, I would say I was one of the first gymnasts who was like, you know, a black girl who had African music. And at first people didn't really understand what was going on because I had to kind of act creature-esque. But afterwards, because I had that routine for about two years, people loved it and they loved how it felt like you're watching a movie. So each routine feels like it's like a little movie scene for everybody to watch. You're a character, you have to show the audience and the judges. What, what is she trying to tell us in her routines? Like, what, what is the story? So that's what I really loved about my African routine for clubs and my begging routine with ball. 
So can you talk a little bit more about the difference between a routine and a performance? I spoke with my girls about this uh, a few months ago, but maybe you can, you know, go on more about it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, there's a big difference between, you said a routine and a performance. So out of those two, you want to go more for the performance, but <laughs> a routine, it's anybody can do a routine. Anybody can do a routine. Every single girl you see or who you train with, who you watch on the floor, even the big elite gymnasts, they all do a routine. But not a lot of them have that performance quality. I call it the sparkle. Not a lot of gymnasts have that quality, which is, I mean, it's, it's rare. That's why if you can do it, very special, hold on to that. And because it's so rare, the audience and the judges want to see more of you, regardless if you're top, bottom, in the middle, doesn't matter. As long as you're, you have that sparkle, that's performance. That's what your coaches want to see, what the audience love, like love it, and judges love too. And I feel like that's something that I for sure had. I had performance. People like to watch me. And I loved watching Alexis when she was older than me at the time. She were old, yeah, she was older than me. Uh, she was a senior. I was a little like 11 year old. And I just, I loved watching Alexis. Alexis had performance <laughs> for sure. It was like, it was like a ball of steel on the floor with like power, like that, like, like nobody could do that, that, that performance. See how I could describe her type of performance in, in words? Some people, you cannot describe it because they just, they don't really have it, so. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nastasia. I actually ran across a picture of us uh, in Montreal. Yes. I don't know if you remember that. I remember that. <laughs> you got first place, right? Yes. You got first place How's my in junior. World Cup. Nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Nastasia got first place in the junior competition and I got first place in the senior competition, which was a great time big for, deal. <laughs> yeah, so it was a big deal. It was a big deal. Let me say um, a lot of people were mad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were like jealous because jealousy is a disease, but you know, it's okay. We, we killed it. We, we did a good job. We did a good job on yeah. that competition. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good time for America and for Black gymnasts, Black rhythmic gymnasts. Um, Arissa, your question. What would you say is the style you perform better in a routine? A lyrical slow routine or like an upbeat fast routine? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel like my specialty is more upbeat, fiery music that makes the crowd want to. It makes the crowd want to go. Um, nothing against lyrical ballet music. I love, I love it. It's, it's classic. You, we need to have that. Um, that just personally was not my specialty. Um, I, did, I did have classical music at one point. I did have slow music. And I, as much as, you know, many people actually did like it on me. Personally, like my own human form was like, uh, I, I want to, I want to like, you know, fire. I want fire, but that's just that's 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 my style. <laughs> I personally like the uh, Vogue routine you did. Oh wow! Oh yeah, the Vogue. Yeah. The Vogue routine with the, I think it's like a periwinkle or like blue leotard with like yeah, it was um, Prince style. Yeah, the feathers yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> many, it. many people in Europe loved that one because mm -hmm. Vogue I think originated in Europe, so mm -hmm. they really liked that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sydney, you got a question? Um, do you think rhythmic gymnastics is diverse as you want it to? Ah, uh, the straight answer to that, Sydney, is no. <laughs> no, it's, it's unfortunately, uh, rhythmic gymnastics is not the most diverse sport, as you probably know, or maybe you don't, but I'm telling you right now, it's not the most diverse in all racial qualities, not just not just black girls like it goes for every every uh minority i would say um all all, all girls of color for sure uh the hispanic community the 
black community, the native community, the Indian community, like everybody. It's, there's not enough of it, unfortunately. And it's tough for sure once you break through that crack and you get to the top with all these other girls who look nothing like you. This nothing like you. They don't act like you. They don't move like you. And they don't, they don't look like you. <laughs> so it gets a little difficult when you reach that point especially even even just starting off as well it was difficult I always thought that I had like something was wrong with me like why 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 are all these girls you know why why is their hair going in a bunch so easily in comparison to mine why why are they all like tanning themselves they would tan themselves all the time I was like why why are they more flexible than me like I just didn't understand at the time and it made me feel like something was wrong with me but then, like I was explaining earlier, when I would step on the floor, I had this quality that they did not have. And it's the performance quality. <laughs> and um, I would love, of course, I'd love rhythmic gymnastics to be more diverse, I for sure. At the time, there were maybe, like I can only name so many black gymnasts from the US on like probably five, one hand, just one hand, maybe three, four, somewhere there barely anything um and internationally as well because now you're not in the u.s now you're in europe where a lot of european countries don't understand diversity they because they don't have that they're not used to seeing that so sometimes it would be a little difficult to travel internationally uh just because the people were not as open-minded as they are here in america but i i do wish one day we'll figure something out to diversify rhythmic because I feel like we have this little sparkle that many girls don't have. I have a question. Um, how do you think a more diverse um, world, a more diverse rhythmic gymnastics world could have changed your experience as a gymnast? How do you think that could have changed your experience? Um, aside of, you know, just you have to start from the base. So I feel like first, it would be awesome to diversify the who's in charge of USA Gymnastics, um, like add, add more diversity up there, or even judges. I cannot name you throughout my career, a single judge of color that I have ever came across. I've came across maybe one person in the staff community who is uh, Black. But otherwise, uh, nobody looked like me from, from the base. So it would be nice to, and in some ways I could, if I was younger, when I felt this way, I could talk to somebody who looked a little more like me, who related more to my uh, feelings and stories rather than trying to talk with uh, my mom who didn't understand me that much, like in, the, in how I feel. She'll never experience how I feel or my coach she'll never, she'll never understand, or my teammates, like, they'll never understand either, as much as I, I love all of them, they all, you know, say it's okay, like, yada, yada, I, which I really appreciate, but it would be nice if there was more diversity up there first, and then we could go down to, like, the gymnasts, the contestants, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that, um, whose question were we on, Sydney's or Risa? um, Arissa, yours? Okay, Arissa, go ahead. At any point of you doing gymnastics, did you ever feel like you wanted to give up? If so, what were some reasons that made you feel that way? And how did you overcome them? That's a, that's a really good question. Um, I do feel like every athlete at one point in their lives is like, I'm done with this. I don't want to do this anymore. I hate this. This is it's so much stress. I just want to lay on my couch and watch TV and have some ice cream and spaghetti and stuff just want to just want to chill I'm, I'm done but then you remember again in the back of your head like everything happens for a reason what is what is my purpose here like why did I even start this in the first place what is what is my purpose what, what am I doing here and I realized particularly my journey was um, I was placed there to not only represent the people but to also you know <laughs> to make a statement, to make a statement for all gymnasts of color, I feel, because if, if someone leaves, then who, who is going to do it? 
who is going to do it eventually when you know you retire or you just leave you just quit like quits the worst thing you can do because at least if you say you tried like with all you tried and you tried and then it didn't work out that's a much better feeling than just saying i'm tired this, this is annoying um, so i would say a, a time where i felt that was um when i actually just transitioned from or like maybe a second year of my senior year because when you're young uh you don't understand a lot of things and then when you're older you begin to see a lot of things that don't sit well with you. <laughs> um, so when I got, I would say, into like my second year of a senior, the senior category, I saw a lot of stuff that were that just didn't sit well with me and nothing was working out. My body began to change because, you know, puberty, you get older. Um, school, school, you know, you know, school, there's school is another thing. Education's forever, knowledge is forever. So I was having that, a lot of stuff. And I was like, why, why? And then at the end of the day, I remember, wow, but I do love performing. Like, I love having people come up to me and say, you inspired my daughter to, like, continue the sport. You inspired her, her, her. My mom loves watching you. I'm like, oh, wow. Like, even if I inspire one person, that's a, that's a big deal because I just help somebody else, like, have more motivation. So imagine if I continue to do that and, and I can, like, inspire more people hundreds thousands that's what i that's what i cared more about i care more i care about the people so but at the same time you have to know about your your own health and stuff but i knew i could do it like if you know you can do it you can do it so that's what that's why i kept going um what's some advice you would give someone who isn't on the national team but still is, they're feeling frustrated at practice and um yeah, they might not feel like doing it anymore. Right. I've had a lot of those moments where I would just honestly, sorry to my coach, sometimes I'd give attitude. <laughs> uh, we all, we all uh, been there before, but um, it, it, it like, it only gets better. You know, I, I started off not, <laughs> it was not where I began to get, I started off every competition I remember I would just place last I would just place last and like my coaches my at the time when I was like younger like young they didn't really care you know it's just it, it recreational enjoying it yada yada but then I feel like once you put your mind to it and you're like it's okay it's okay it's gonna be better it's gonna be better that's what happened and I slowly started to like beat the people who would never even assume that I would get on top Started to beat them slowly. Oh, one girl. Oh, the next. That's when heads started to turn. Talking. <laughs> uh, teammates began to notice that too. Parents, everybody. So I'm like, wow, if I really put my mind to something and I started to work harder, even when getting knocked down 10,000 times. But look, I'm slowly going up the ladder. So that's what you have to think about. You have to think about it as a ladder. You know, sometimes you my fall step miss a step yada yada it happens but then like you, you can only go up it's all in the head so you have to think about that you have to think about that it's all in the head it's all in the head thank you so much um Sydney? um if you mess up in a routine do you just like give up or do you keep on going I'm sorry. <laughs> do I do I give up or do I keep going? Yeah. Um, personally, I was the type of person at competitions where when I would drop, it would trigger a thing in me. I'm like, God, I messed up and now I can only do well after this moment because I already had my pass. Like, boom, like you already you already dropped it. So it's like, boom, my, my pass is done. I can only show the, uh, the judges after this mistake what else I can do. What else can I prove to them? Like, okay, I dropped it. And look at me do all these turns. Look at me do this jump. Look at the next trick I'm about to do. It's okay. I dropped it. I'm human. I'm not a robot. So that's something that was, I, had, I will praise myself when I was younger. I had that in me that I wouldn't let one drop make me scared and I'd fret over this one drop throughout the next 
30 seconds of the routine because I still have 30 more seconds. I still can gain some points. It's happened when uh, I've dropped and yet I would still end up doing better than somebody else just because the, the things I did afterwards, I, I did it like five times better than I normally would because I know I already messed up. Like I said, you have however so many seconds of the routine. There's, there's, there's no reason to be like, ah, great, dropped it. What's the point? What's the point? You, st you still have so many, much more, many more elements and tricks and things to do to show people that like one drop does not phase me. Two drops does not phase me. It happened, it's life. It's gonna be a hundred more other competitions. <laughs> All right, we're reaching our last question, Arisa. Gotcha. Are you proud to represent black rhythmic gymnasts? Of course. Of course, loud for the people in the back. Of course I am, of course, because there's, it's such an honor, like I was saying earlier, to inspire others. That's, that's my main goal. I want, I want kids and adults as well to know that like the path does not close just because of the color of your skin or anything. Like I was saying, I do wish there was more diversity in you know, the head of the Federation for gym, Rhythmic Gymnastics particularly. But I feel like as time goes, it'll get better for sure. But it's like I said, it's an honor to know that you inspire others. Like I'm sure you guys all know who Michael Phelps is or Usain Bolt or Serena Williams. At one point, they all started off as like, not the best, lots of doubters, lots of doubters. That's the thing that can break you, like your, your, your head. But um, they kept going and they kept going and they inspire people to this day. They inspire people while they were going. They brought so many other people along with them on their journey because of the inspiration. And I want people to know that, you know, we're just as beautiful, we're just as capable, maybe even better. <laughs> like we, we can do it too. There just needs to be a slight change. There's a hiccup for a long time because uh, the sport is very popular in Europe and Russia and Asia, but not as popular in, you know, uh, South America, the African continent, and like, you know, America, but we're getting so much better. And that makes me happy that we're going up. But it's for sure, it's, it's an honor to represent not just the Black community, but like the whole community of color. There's, cause there's not a lot of people who have made it uh, to the elites or the national team or World Cups or Grand Prix. It's, it's bigger, it's bigger than just, oh, let me get this medal. It's way bigger than that. It's, oh, I'm representing my people <laughs> so yeah um okay I'll ask my last question who are some rhythmic gymnasts of color that we can look out for um specifically I guess who are some black rhythmic gymnasts that we can look out for um that you know about um in the future hopefully in, the in a pre-covid wor world hopefully in a pre-covid world where we are able to go to competitions and actually see them compete? Who are some Black rhythmic gymnasts we can look out for? To my knowledge, when I, I retired last year, um, and I was still the only Black gymnast on the U.S. team, and just the team in general, like junior, senior, just anything involved, um, there weren't that many Black gymnast girls that I noticed were in the, in the rising when I retired last year um so as the year just started so I don't know yet who we can look out for as there hasn't been real, any competitions last year um and when I retired like at the beginning of last year there's uh I, I can't say but I can say that <laughs> um I will try to eventually help out the rhythmic community by becoming, by trying to get into that field with the people who are in charge of the rhythmic gymnastics community. Because like I said, I, I would love for there to be more diversity. Um, I will say some of my favorite black gymnasts at the time or two years ago was, um, there was this one girl from South Africa. Her name was Grace Legote. Um, I remember she was circulating on the internet for a minute because she was just this fire cracker girl on the floor. Maybe she didn't score as high. She didn't make it to like finals and stuff like that. But uh, 
she was just so entertaining to watch. And I finally got to meet her one time at a competition and we took like our iconic picture together and everything. And it was like a crazy moment. And I remember just how kind she was and so much warmth came from her unlike several other girls internationally who don't have that same type of uh, love exuding from them. And I don't know, Grace Lagote was one of my favorite black gymnasts because she was just so kind and she was like fire, always smiling, just no, no, I didn't, I didn't feel the negative aura from her. I loved it. I loved it. But I will, I will be watching out if there's any um, black girls in the coming for, I hope, I hope this season we can compete. Uh, I don't know if there's any competitions, but I will be looking out as of now. I don't know. <laughs> Do you know any like June? I know there's no seniors for sure. <laughs> Um, well, a uh, gymnast that began on our team and then uh, went on to Empire Rhythmics, her name is Kaylee Forrest. She's oh, actually- Oh, I've heard of her. I've, I've, she's like very flexible. I've seen pictures of her. Mm -hmm. Yes. So she is extremely promising. Um, other Black gymnasts? I don't know. We Isn't need more sad? of us, please. Yeah, we I need know. more of us. I know. That's we do. We do. Isn't that sad? You can only name one, yeah. two. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, okay, I have one more question. How do you think that we can make the sport um, more available to Black gymnasts? How do you think that we can get the world world uh, word out there? I mean, of course, we have the Wendy Hillier Gymnastics Foundation, so we have a very, very diverse uh, team of uh, gymnasts. But how do you think that we can make rhythmic gymnastics more, like, you know, well-known in the Black community? In the Black, yeah. Um, well, one way for sure, I sound old when I say this, but like for some reason, when I was like still on the national team, the inner, like, I feel like during COVID, the internet has been just booming, like just so much things. Like the kids are on TikTok, Instagram, Reels, Face, like Facebook's for the old generation. I'm talking about like our generation, it's, it's like, it's booming right now. And I'm like, wow, I wish this was existent three years ago, four years ago five years ago, however many years ago, where we could be posting more, or I could be posting more, just people could be posting more for like things to go viral. Or, you know, that's why I started to be a little bit more in the entertainment business and modeling. So I, at the time I was like representing rhythmic, like I, I, I was telling everyone about it every time I would go somewhere or in music videos, I would always say, oh yeah, rhythmic, like I would spread the word. And many times like it, it did get big, like, to this day, there's a lot of people who don't know what rhythmic gymnastic is um, in America. Um, I, but I'm so happy there is the uh, Hillard Foundation, but I feel like there should be like more gyms with uh, people of color who, because it's more inviting for younger girls who don't really have anybody that looks like them. Well, our, our gym is a gym. I uh, know, I stage. know, I know. There should be more. There should be oh, more. Okay. I just, I mm -hmm. personally cannot. I'm in school. I'm still young. I mean, it's it's not too late to start, of course. But I, I'm a little, I'm a little busy, very busy right now with the university. But I, I like I said, I would love to do something of that sort for sure. Social media, um, more gyms. I'm trying to think more. Like, it would be nice if. I guess social media is the best way and like music videos like oh what's what is that ribbon and what is that like is that ribbon dancing no it's not ribbon dance rhythmic and, and like you see all the time like people talk about it um I don't even I don't know like I've been doing articles and stuff like interviews and things like that I've been doing that but for sure because everybody is drawn to social media like that's just that's the way how our generation and society works it's just, it just needs more exposure. And unfortunately there hasn't been that exposure yet. Like it just hasn't been there. It has not been there yet for America. It's not really um, the priority, uh, <laughs> which is sad to say, but it, it makes sense. I think the time, our time will come. It'll come, it'll come, watch, it'll come. Like we dominate in a lot of things, it'll come. Well, thank you so much, uh, Nastasia. Ladies, can you thank Nastasia? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this will be cut, ladies. Can you thank her? Thank the girl. Thank, it's okay. <laughs>
thank you guys for asking those questions those were really good questions they weren't like you know some they came up with them the, uh, themselves really those are so sydney and Arisa, those are very good questions they were like deep like i had to think like it wasn't oh why do you like the ribbon <laughs> it was like it was it was really good like these were thought out questions so thank you guys for like taking the time out of your day to listen to me and interview me i really appreciate that um where can we follow you at um tiktok instagram yeah i'm on everything since the gymnastics days but uh my username is usually like nastasia generalova it's a very it's it's my name you're not going to confuse it there's only one of me in this world so it's very easy to find me on tiktok twitter instagram and facebook yeah but <laughs>